a little different today. I'm doing a cooking stream. So yeah, this is an extra life cooking stream. I don't know if I've seen anybody do that before. But uh, anyway, so today I've got a great treat here because this gift basket here was brought to me by, well, I bid on it uh, in, a, in a charity auction for uh, my local children's hospital, children's specialized hospital in uh, New Jersey. And so I've got some gnocchi. And I'm going to cook that with uh, this vodka sauce. I like to make my own sauce from scratch. So I'm just going to use this and um, add some enhancements to it. Um, then I've got a salad I'm going to make. But I'm also going to make a crostini with this uh, roasted tomato and garlic topping. So again, all these uh, um, ingredients are going to make a... I'm going to make a three-course meal today. Basically, my, my goal is to get it done before my family comes home. So hopefully, you know, I can get it all <laughs> taken care of. Uh, let's start with cooking the, the gnocchi. So I'm going to start boiling the water. First, I should get some salt. So why salt? I mean, yeah, I could just boil it straight in the water. But I like to salt my water. Why? Because it helps to boil it faster. See, when you apply heat to the water molecules, they start to move. And the more they move and bump up against each other, it creates friction. And that friction creates heat. So eventually, it'll, it'll start to boil. What salt does is the salt crystals get in the way of the water molecules and... Um, it forces them to bump against each other and it, it forces them to bump into each other more often so it heats up faster so while that's going let me bring out my other ingredients so I've got so the hospital provided two olive two uh, infused olive oils garlic infused and herb infused today I'm going to use the herb infused because I believe this sauce already has garlic oh no it doesn't so I'll use the garlic one first and get this out of the way and get this out of the way All right, so as that's boiling, let me prep my station. All right, I'm gonna prep the aromatics meaning uh, stuff I'm going to use just to uh, create a nice aroma for the dish. So what I've got here are shallots. They're basically in the, they're in the onion family, but uh, um, unlike yellow or white onions or red onions, uh, I like using these in sauces because um, they tend to for lack of a better term, melt into the sauce. You know, they, they don't stay chunky. Delivers the flavor and then melts away into the sauce. And the hardest thing about shallots is peeling them. But once I get that done, easy peasy. Easy peasy. So, fun fact for those who are just tuning in, um, I actually took culinary, uh, well, recreational culinary classes uh, in New York City. And one of the first classes that I took 
was an Italian cooking. So I'm very familiar with a lot of these ingredients. Um, I never went on to, <clears throat> I never went on to like professional level classes. Um, I thought maybe it would take the fun out of it if I did that. That said, that said, I did enjoy learning about cooking new foods and whatnot. Or, you know, uh, learning about the regional cuisine uh, in Italy. So this kind of gnocchi is from the Campania region. If you're not familiar with that, that's okay. Um, but this is actually a very, it's going to be a mixed Italian regional dish today because I don't believe uh, uh, bruschetta or what you call uh, well yeah yeah bruschetta or um, crostini is all of that uh, popular in Campania. Okay, so I've got the shallots minced. Since uh, this is a garlic infused olive oil, I don't need to um, prepare more garlic. It's already in the oil. It's gotta shake it up. And I've got a neat trick for this later. Shake it up so I get the garlic. Get the garlic going. Okay, so the water is already starting to shimmer, and it's almost ready to go. So yeah, I just kind of eyeballed the uh, the olive oil there. I don't I didn't need a specific measurement. But if you want to see what it looks like, there it is. Too bad you can't smell it. Immediately, the, the garlic and the olive oil um, permeates the air. Then the shallots go in. Um, as soon as uh, it starts to release the heat, uh, excuse me, the liquids, it starts to, you know, start to get really aromatic. Shake it up a bit more. I wonder if y'all can see this. Yeah. Turn on the heat to medium so it doesn't overcook. That's one way to open. <laughs> that's one way to open a jar of sauce. I take, I take the pan off the heat because the oil is still hot. Had I put the sauce in immediately, it would have started to splatter. So I wanted to keep it from doing that. Okay. Get that. Uh, got a wooden spoon. Make sure it's stirred nice. I want the shallots to really get incorporated into the sauce. And just give it a dash more salt. And I have black pepper. I should not forget black pepper. Again, just a little bit. Vodka sauce is usually very flavorful, so you don't need a ton of seasoning. But um, salt helps to uh, bring out the salt helps to bring out um, the distinct flavors in each component of the sauce. Okay. All right. So while that's heating up. Prepare the bread. Okay, so 
even though this says bruschetta topping, uh, the irony is that even though it says bruschetta topping, the examples are all examples of crostini. So the difference is bruschetta um, is when you rub olive oil and garlic on like plain white, like wide slice of the toast and then toast it. Uh, whereas crostini is um, you toast kind of like a baguette. So they're like round circles, round circles, round, round pieces of bread, <laughs> round circles. Uh, So let me just, I don't want to cross contaminate, so I'll just flip the cutting board over. And let's start to slice up the bread. You don't want them to be too thick or too thin. Generally I go with about half an inch. And let's see how many we can fit here. That'll be how many pieces of uh, crostini we can make. Eight pieces. Yep, still half an inch. Right. That'll be like our first batch, our first batch of crostini. Alright, so this is starting to simmer. bring it down to a, to low to let it simmer for a little bit longer. I want the sauce to cook low and slow for a little bit to allow the flavors to develop. Hmm. Challenge number one, finding a proper lid for the saucepan. I just wonder where they went. That'll do for now. Okay. It's starting to boil. So, yeah, I'm assembling these dishes or these components um, pretty much simultaneously. I'm gonna pour the pasta into the bowl, the bowl of the pot. I'm use a separate spoon here. So I like to use this kind of like slotted spoon. It's, a, it's in the shape of a dinosaur. I'll stir it a little bit to make sure like every every piece of pasta gets submerged but also doing so releases um, some of the starch which I'll get to later all right so we've got the we've got the crostini what I normally like to do with this is rub them a little bit with uh, olive oil just like that Obviously, make sure you wash your hands before doing this. Now, doing it this way, because oil has a higher smoke temp than just, you know, leaving it normally. Um, hopefully, it'll allow for more even toasting within the toaster oven. In they go. Uh, 
be about eight, ten minutes. Meanwhile, the pasta's going. Okay, so we've got the crostini starting to toast, and we've got the pasta in the boil. We've got the sauce simmering. The next component is, oh, <laughs> Doctors Without Borders, how are you doing? Hold on, let me get a shout out for Doctors Without Borders. Do you have enough for the whole Doctors Without Borders stream team? I can certainly, I think this will certainly serve the team. <laughs> How you doing? How's your Monday? There aren't a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I'm sure we can get together for a uh, for a meal. And this is only two pieces of what I'm what I'm cooking today. I didn't even notice I had sauce on my shirt. But yeah, welcome to. Kong's Kitchen. <laughs> Just another manic Monday. Oh, I wish I had song request on. But yeah, if you're just joining us, I've got um, gnocchi with vodka sauce. We'll get the gnocchi and the sauce already cooking. I've got a tomato, tomato crostini starting up in the oven. And I'm about to prepare the salad. It's an arugula fig with... Um, goat cheese and i'm making like a balsamic reduction for it i first started cooking for myself like almost 20 years ago and this is one of my first saucepans it's kind of wobbly but it served me well so let me get the balsamic balsamic on its own it has that kind of vinegary taste but when you get it to reduce I think I'm gonna use up all my balsamic it takes away a lot of the liquid and becomes kind of syrupy and that's what I'm looking for uh, when I put it on top of my figs it's a pro it is a very well seasoned pan it's been, it's cooked like almost everything <laughs> that I've ever cooked, at least once. All right, I'm gonna stir the pasta a bit. I don't want it getting stuck in the bottom. It's still got a ways to go. Uh, but let me prepare the figs. So I've got these great figs here. I was surprised to find them in the store. We're still in season. Wow, these, this looks great. See, like the figs, they're, they're they're so plump and they're tender, which means this is gonna be really sweet when uh, when I finish when I finish roasting them. Oh yeah, forgot. Got to trim the tops off. Don't want. I don't need to roast the stems of the figs. Ooh, that sauce starts. Is that starting to look good? The balsamic starting to reduce. still needs a little bit of time and the crostini is looking good okay I have already done four or five I'll probably do six figs to start and if I think I need more I'll pop in some more Yes, stream for access. 
From December 7th to December 10th, uh, Doctors Without Borders is doing a streaming event uh, to benefit one of their campaigns, the Access Campaign, um, whose purpose is to provide access to medicine uh, that otherwise would um, not be a not be made available to to people who need it. So, for those who are interested in so for those who are interested in uh, participating in that event, you know, give Doctors Without Borders a follow. And, um, you know, they, they, I believe they have a link as well. General Greebles! You signed up for Stream for Access already. Well, thank you for signing up. I think it's great when, uh, you know, people tell me that they've signed up for, the, for these charity streams. It's one of the things that I love about doing about streaming. So it's, uh, I always want to be involved in helping as many charities as possible. Yeah, that sauce is still going. Oh, that ding. Oh, these are looking good. Now I need, yeah, this will do. And it's not hot enough, not too hot that I can't handle it like this. But. While I'm holding on to this hot plate, uh, hot tray, where'd that trivet go? Yeah, so Children's Specialized Hospital sent me this gift basket that contained not only today's ingredients, but a bunch of stuff from my kitchen, like, uh, you know, these trivets. The hand, these towels came from the hospital, which is awesome. Okay. So these need to cool off a little bit before I can top them, but not for nothing. The figs are going to go in immediately after the crostini. Game lover, how's it going? It's been a while. Toast. <laughs> How are you doing, game lover? Hope your Monday is going well. Thanks for checking out a non-Monster Hunter stream. <laughs> Alright, this one's going in for about seven minutes. Uh, maybe eight. I just want to roast it enough so that the, the liquid in the figs starts to, um, you know, uh, release from the fruit itself. To get some of that sweetness. Oh, okay. But this pasta is looking good. Okay, I'm gonna try it one out. Yeah, it's perfect. So, so if you're making pasta, one of the coolest things to have is this kind of like over the sink colander. All right, game lover, thanks for dropping by. Uh, have fun in class. And yes, thanks for dropping by to check out the toast. I got toast. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a YouTube video up so that uh, you can see how this whole thing looks when I'm done. <laughs> click, click, lol. Okay, so. For those um, pasta purists, they're going to come after me for, like, pouring the pasta water out. But... Don't worry, I've got a bowl under my um, colander to um, to catch some of this because I need some of the pasta water with the released starch. You see the steam coming up? That was hot. So what's neat about this colander is it's over the sink, right? So it doesn't get messy. Okay, and so I had the I had a bowl under the colander to take some of the water. Now why do I need the water? 
So as I said earlier, uh, when you stir the pasta, it releases starch. The starch that was released from the pasta is going to go into the sauce. This add this becomes a thickener for the sauce. It adds a little bit of texture um, overall. Okay, almost all the components are ready. Just waiting on the, the figs and the uh, balsamic reduction. Okay, these are cool enough to top with the bruschetta tomato topping. All right, I love the sound of that pop. So I'm gonna start the plate. Even though I haven't completed the salad yet, I'll start the plate. So this bruschetta topping is kind of like a paste, just fine. It spreads easily because of it. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's just a little bit for now. I'm basically just setting, setting the stage for when the dish uh, comes together. So this dish is going to have a combination of complex flavors. So first you got the tomato vodka sauce. Then you've got this um, multicolor salad, which I'm making. So you got the beets, the beets, figs. Why did I say beets? The figs. Um, we got arugula, goat cheese. I'm going to put nuts in there, and I've got this pomegranate. Now, if you've never worked with pomegranate before, it's kind of messy. So the way I like to work with the pomegranate is I like to separate them in water. By the way, another fun fact, did you know the word grenade comes from pomegranate? If you notice, this looks a little bit like one of those like old cartoon grenades. And the inside is broken up into like little cells with these seeds. So like, like a grenade that has tons of shrapnel in it that fly out, uh, that's the way the pomegranates are structured. And if you've ever had pomegranate juice stuck in your clothes, it is um, very tough to get out, which is again why I like to separate them in water. That way it's less likely to fly up at me. So pardon me while I separate these seeds. But this will add a bit of sweetness on top of the figs that again go, runs counter to the bitterness of the arugula. If you like the bitter greens of like kale, and arugula, this salad is for you. I'm hearing the sizzling of the figs already, I love it. Well, like I said earlier, those figs look really plump, so I know there's gonna be a lot of liquid and sugar about to be extruded from the fruit. Yeah, thank goodness I'm doing this again in the water because my hands are like blood red. <laughs> it's like I was in surgery. But for those that are joining, thank you for dropping by. This is my first ever cooking stream. And um, it's a charity stream as well. Um, I'm supporting a bunch of charities this year, but this one is for Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. My local Children's Miracle Network Hospital sent me this gift basket with all the ingredients that are 
present today. So I thought the best way to honor that was to actually cook the ingredients. Oh, and the figs are ready. I'm a little off schedule here because of the, uh, the seeds in the pomegranate, but I'll finish it. Nope. You don't need to drop a chunk of the skin in. All right. Let's bring these out. Yeah, so I didn't even add any sugar to it, but as you can see, there's kind of already liquidy stuff coming out of there. This will combine really well with um, the toppings I'm going to put in. Okay, now I'm going to get a separate colander. This one is for the pomegranate seeds. Probably be a good idea to move my pasta out of the way. Okay. Here we go. Kitchen is already getting cluttered. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll clean up afterwards. Off stream. <laughs> okay, good. Everything's coming together. All right, so I've got my crostini. Now I've got some organic arugula. So yeah, I'm putting all the appetizers in first. Putting together the salad starts with the arugula as kind of like a bed. Okay. And on top of that bed, so you can watch me kind of put it all together. One, two figs. Some of the pomegranates, pomegranate seeds rather. Okay. Now I'm normally not a huge fan of goat cheese, but this is perfect for here. So yeah, there were a lot of sweet ingredients already. So having goat cheese kind of add a kind of savory counter to it um, really rounds out the flavor profile of the salad. But yeah, you don't need to get anything fancy with the goat cheese. You just cut up a little bit. You just cut it up a little bit and then sprinkle a little bit on top of the figs. So again, it's hot already, the figs, so it's gonna the cheese is gonna adhere to it nicely. Except for that one piece that fell off. <laughs> Okay. And finally, I've got some chopped walnuts. All right, I forget that I gotta present it to the, to the camera. Some chopped Chop walnuts. Again, uh, mixing savory with sweet. Okay, so this needs a little bit more time to reduce. That's fine. So, so far, this is how the dish looks. I've got the crostini. Then I got the fig and roast, roasted fig and arugula salad with the goat cheese. 
some walnuts and pomegranate seeds. And again, add a little bit of pomegranate seeds to give it some color. Brighten it up a bit. All right. Next. We get a heap of the pasta. Now, gnocchi, the gnocchi I'm used to working with is made of potato flour. This is made out of durum wheat, which is like a lot of the more common pasta I've cooked with. So I was surprised that this was actually gnocchi. I, didn't I only learned recently that gnocchi can be made with stuff other than potato flour. Okay, so let's start to put the... Can you see it properly? Stuff in the way. All right. That looks so good. Thank you. Oh, it smells really nice. So the other thing I like about this kind of open-faced pasta, which looks like mini shells, you know, is it stores the sauce really well. crostini and its toppings. But I want this to plate nicely. And for the pasta, You can never go wrong without, you can never go wrong with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. So yeah, Parmesan. Ooh, I love it. It just melts straight into the sauce. So here's kind of what it looks now. So I poured in some balsamic vinegar into the saucepan. And now, after some boiling, it's reduced and it's now like this thick, syrupy texture. Which is exactly what I want when topping the figs. So here's a complete dish. So I've got uh, arugula salad with roasted figs, um, goat cheese, chopped uh, walnuts, and a, and a balsamic reduction sauce. I've got a crostini, which is just toasted baguette with a roasted tomato um, topping, roasted tomato, garlic, and olive oil. And finally, I've got a gnocchi with um, uh, vodka sauce that I've added um, some uh, sauteed shallots with to kind of give it some extra aroma and texture. And that's a complete dish. So what started out as this ooh, gift basket of random stuff is now a complete meal. One of the things I looked forward to about being home today was uh, making time to cook and uh, trying cooking stream for the first time. Okay, so let me clear this out. I'll put it in a plastic bag to save in the freezer. Just to go in a sandwich bag. There we go. Why use a whole shopping bag? So again, I like to, you know, 
reduce, reuse, and recycle. If nothing else, if you know, if I don't end up actually using it, like, I mean, I probably will because uh, the cold seasons are coming, and I use my stock for soup, soup bases. But you know, if in the case that I don't actually use it, what I'll end up doing is just putting it in compost. But yeah, no, it. If you're just joining me, um, it, this has been a, it's been pretty fun so far. Turning a gift basket that the Children's Specialized Hospital of New Jersey sent to me into this dish. You know, I just wanted to shout out to the Children's Specialized Hospital in New Brunswick for sending me all this awesome food. Um, and there's some Pinot Grigio. They sent us a bottle, actually they sent us two bottles of wine. So okay, I can't pick between the red or the white. Normally they say use white wine for like chicken, fish, and seafood, uh, chicken, fish, and vegetables, and red wine for like red meat. But we've got a lot of red here already in the, uh, in the components. So I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll try both. Okay, one last thing is olives. You can't have a Mediterranean meal without a mix of olives. Um, on the side. So I've got green and, well, I have manzanilla and I have uh, calamata. The manzanillas have pimentos in them to kind of give it a, a nice little kick. Now, technically, these olives can go with any component of the dish. So I'm kind of just like putting them anywhere, everywhere. Okay. These kalamatas are like the black olives. Um, they have a more pickly taste to them, I think. And so I think um, that kind of like acidic flavor profile goes really well with uh, some of the other components here. Okay, so uh, wrapping up the making of a three course Italian meal. So I've got arugula salad, uh, crostini, and um, some gnocchi and vodka sauce. So, uh, you know, hope, hope you enjoy Italian food. All right, moment of truth. Let's taste this food. So uh, I got green olive. Hmm. Really good. I figure if I'm gonna cook something, I wanna make sure it tastes good to my viewers too. All right, so yeah, no, this crostini is great. It was toasted just right. I think if I left, I, I toasted it for eight minutes. If I put it in for 10, it might've been too much. Okay, so now we've got the, the fig and arugula salad. So the fig has a balsamic reduction on it after being lightly toasted with some uh, pecans and goat cheese. Mm. That goat cheese really rounds out the flavor, balances out the sweetness of all the other components. And there were pomegranate seeds in there as well, which add a nice little pop because when you bite into it, it you know the liquid just bursts from the pomegranate seed and then the olive afterwards is like a palate cleanser which works when you rotate the dish into the next component ah okay so this is um again the gnocchi with the vodka sauce now, the vodka sauce was already pre-made in a jar, so I decided I'd saute some shallots to add some aroma and flavoring to it. 
All right. And yeah, and I use Parmesan cheese to go to top this with. This all goes all really well together. And again, the olives add a nice little, like, that pickling flavor rounds out all the other pieces. Nope, I dropped one. <laughs> But yeah, all together, this is a really good dish. And um, mm, those figs are amazing. I mean, I really do hope I can do more cooking streams. Um, I just got to get inspiration on what to cook next. So I'm always open to suggestions. If anybody has any ideas or um, has dishes they want to try, or want me to try rather, I'm um, more than happy to, to do it. Um, so if you liked uh, what you saw today, um, please give me a follow. And um, I mean, I love to cook. And so it's, it means a lot to me that people want to watch me cook and eat. But yeah, this was a really fun dish to make. So thank you again, Children's Hospital, Children's Specialized Hospital in New Brunswick. This one's for you. <laughs>